Hello chess lovers, Soren here and I have another mind-blowing game for you from 2018 Russian Championship Super Final. With the white piece is playing Denis Hizmatulin and his opponent is Daniel Dubov. Now let's see what happened on the board. This game was played in round 4 and Hizmatulin started the game with d4, knight f6 by Dubov, knight f3, g6, e3, bishop g7, bishop e2, we see Kiev's link by both sides, d6, Dubov goes for king's Indian defense type formation and b3, Hizmatulin is choosing a not a very ambitious line, he's going to fianke to his queenside bishop and this is like sidestepping the main theoretical lines. For example, from elite players, Vladimir Kromnik is sometimes choosing typical setups. Knight c6, black proceeds with his usual development and is preparing e5, bishop b2, bishop f5, c4 and e5. D takes e5, well instead of playing d takes e5, d5 could have given white better chances, if knight b4 then simply knight c3, if c6 then a3, kicking away the knight from this b4 square, but instead after e5 we see d takes e5, d takes e5 and queen c1. Well, if a move like knight takes e5, then actually this can be very dangerous for white, because black can first exchange the queens and then play knight g4 and this pin is actually going to be fatal. If bishop takes g4, then bishop takes g4, if rook d5, then bishop e6 and then rook d8 and then the rook can penetrate white's camp, actually black stands much better and this rook looks somewhat misplaced. Let's go back in the game we see queen c1, queen e7, both players are moving away their queens from the d file and are freeing it for their rooks, a3, white is taking under control the b4 square is not allowing any knight intrusions, rook d8 and now white has to be actually very careful, for example if you develop your knight then black can go for this knight a5 move and you are forced to play bishop d1 which is not a very pleasant to make. In the game after rook d8 we see b4, white is advancing on the queen side, meanwhile black is trying to organize his game on the king side, bishop g4 and rook a2, this is a move which I will definitely call a dubious move. Instead of playing rook a2 it was better to play h3, if bishop h5 then white can proceed with the development, but instead we see rook a2, now comes e4, bishop takes f6, of course white's last move favors only black, now the dark colored bishop will be the only controller of a1 aj diagonal. Right now the knight on f3 is hanging, knight d4 was played, but now comes knight takes d4, bishop takes g4, h5, bishop d1, well if move like bishop takes h5, then black has a very tricky continuation, black can play knight b3, if queen c2 with the idea of if g takes h5 then queen takes b3 then black can go for knight a1, a very interesting knight maneuver I think. If queen takes e4 then g takes h5, black stands much better. In the game after h5 we see bishop d1 and here comes this hyper aggressive knight f3 sacrifice, look at this move. King h1, of course capturing on f3 can be very dangerous, this is exposing white's king side. Right now already there is a mating threat, if king h1 then queen h4 and then the bishop will join the attack. And if you give away your bishop then white's exposed king side looks very awkward. Or after knight f3 check, if bishop takes f3 then simply e takes f3 and again white is facing serious problems. In the game after knight f3 check we see king h1, now comes queen h4 with a direct mating threat, h3 and f5, black is starting a pawn storm on the king's side, c5, knight g5, the knight is coming after the pawn on h3, by the way instead of playing f5 on move 19, again knight g5 was playable and then black could bring more forces, bishop e5, but in the game after h3 we first see f5 and only then knight g5, queen c4 check, 
king h7 and f4 now black has to be very careful because if you capture and pass on then you will lose your queen now can you understand that tricky idea of bringing the queen on c4 square but dubov is a strong player and he found a powerful continuation he went for knight takes h3 g takes h3 and now you may ask but what is black going to do this rook can always come and support white king but in this position Dubov went for a mind-blowing rook takes d1 sacrifice this is simply a move which is blowing apart white's position king g2 well if rook takes d1 then black can capture on h3 and then queen g4 check and then can capture on d1 and this is going to be winning actually black has two extra pawns and with this exposed white king, white has no chance to survive. If knight d2, then this time g5. You can't capture on g5, the bishop can join the attack, and this is a total destruction, guys. In the game after rook takes d1, we see king g2. Now comes rook d3, the rook is coming after the pawn on e3. Rook e2, but after g5, believe it or not, but finally his matulin resigned. Now if you play knight d2 then simply rook takes a3 or if you move like f takes g5 then queen takes g5 and then rook takes e3. Of course though there are no direct mating threats but white has no chance to survive in this position that's why after g5 white resigned. Another very impressive game by Daniel Dubov actually this is the second time when during this tournament he's playing a brilliant attacking game. The other game with double rook sacrifice I have already published and if you haven't seen that game I will pin the link in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. For more games don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.